Hey everybody, my name is Dr. Omende and I would like to continue the lecture series on the anatomy of the neck and in this video we'll start by discussing the posterior triangle of the neck. So what are the boundaries of the posterior triangle of the neck? Remember our quadrilateral um, um, area of neck from anterior middle, the, you have your clavicle, you have anterior border of the and posterior triangles by the sternal plate of muscle. So Posterior triangle, we are going to talk about the region below the muscle. So anteriorly, the triangle uh, bordered by the posterior border of the muscle, is bordered by the anterior border of the muscle, and inferiorly, or the base, is bordered by the middle of the clavicle, the middle third of the clavicle. The apex of the posterior is at the supersternal plate of mastoid and the busiest muscle in it. Remember, the other triangle, the roof is formed by skin, superficial fascia, in the external jugular vein that runs superficially in this posterior triangle of the neck. So this just shows you the roof of the posterior triangle. So you'll have skin, superficial fascia, investing fascia, and there's external jugular vein here. And of course you have the subcutaneous um, um, nerves. So um, what forms the floor of the posterior triangle? You have prevertebral fascia that covers prevertebral muscles. So you have various muscles that form the flow of the posterior triangle and they are covered by prevertebral fascia. So this is the flow of the posterior triangle. So which muscles? You have the splenius scapitis muscle, you have the levator scapular muscle, which elevate the, the scapula, you have the scalenus medius and scalenus posterior. So this is your scalenus posterior, this is your middle scalene, Levator scapula and splenia scapitis. So these are the muscles that form the flow of the posterior triangle of the neck. So the posterior triangle is subdivided into two. This is our posterior triangle here. You divide it into upper occipital and lower supraclavicle triangle, supraclavicular triangle. So it's divided into two by the inferior belly of the omohyoid muscle. So occipital triangle and supraclavicular triangle divided by um, inferior belly of the homohyoid muscle. So we'll start by discussing the occipital triangle. So this here is the occipital triangle. Okay. What are the boundaries of the occipital triangle? It's bordered by posterior border of sternocleidomastoid anteriorly, then anterior border of trapezius posteriorly, and inferiorly by the superior border of the inferior belly of omohyoid muscle. So those are the boundaries of this occipital triangle. And the skin, superficial fascia and investing fascia form the roof or the covering of the occipital triangle. And the flow of the occipital triangle is formed by uh, a prevertebral muscles covered by prevertebral fascia. And this include scalenus anterior, scalenus medius, and scalenus posterior muscles. On the upper end, we have splenius capitis and some portion of the levator scapula muscle. So splenius scapitis, the vetus scapula, and the three scalenus muscle form the flow of the occipital triangle. What are the contents of the occipital triangle? Mainly you have nerves, accessory nerve that emerges from the uh, middle of the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and crosses the occipital triangle to the trapezius. So as you can see, you have your spinal accessory nerve and you also have some aspects of the brachial plexus passing through the, the occipital triangle. Remember, brachial plexus come from C5 to T1, so they're coming from the neck, the, the cervical portion of the spinal cord. Okay. Then we have the supraclavicular triangle, this lower triangle here. It's bounded by posterior border of sternocleidomastoid anteriorly. This is the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Then inferior belly of omohyoid, this is the inferior belly of omohyoid, and the middle third, middle third of the clavicle here. So those are the boundaries of the um, supraclavicular triangle. Then this supraclavicular triangle is covered by skin, superficial fascia, and investing fascia, which form the roof of the triangle. And deep or the flow of the supraclavicular triangle is by prevertebral fascia covering some prevertebral muscles such as inferior part of the scalenus muscles. What are the contents of this supraclavicular triangle? You have the subclavian vein, okay, subclavian vein and subclavian artery. You also have the brachial plexus. Remember, subclavian 
uh, vein and artery. They are, they are actually separated by the scalenus anterior at the level of the um, scalene tubercle around the superior surface of the first rib and that's around this region, the supraclavicular triangle. So that's where you can see subclavian artery and vein. So subclavian vein is anteriorly followed by scalene anterior muscle, then posterior to it you have your subclavian artery. Then of course you have parts of the brachial plexus within the supraclavicular triangle. So this um, image just shows you subclavian artery giving its branches. So you should be able to write an essay on subclavian artery. On the right, it comes from the brachiocephalic trunk. On the left, it comes directly from the arc of the aorta. Subclavian artery is divided into three parts by scalene anterior muscle. The first part has three branches. You have the vertebral artery that goes upwards. This is the vertebral artery goes upwards following the passing through foramen transverse area within foramen within the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra we call them foramen transverse area and this vertebral artery will through the foramen magnum enter the cranium and participate in forming the arterial circle of willis because the right and the left vertebral artery will fuse to form basilar and basilar will terminate by giving um posterior cerebral posterior cerebral um, arteries so the apart from vertebral the first part of subclavian artery also gives thyrocervical trunk thyrocervical trunk will give inferior thyroid artery to the inferior parts of the thyroid gland it will also give the transverse cervical and the suprascapular artery passing above the um, suprascapular notch so Thyrocervical trunk gives you inferior thyroid, transverse cervical, and suprascapular. Then the first part of subclavian artery also gives the internal mammary. Okay, that's the internal mammary or internal thoracic that will give perforating branches to the medial sides of the breast and it ends up dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic arteries that will supply the anterior thoracic wall and yeah, basically anterior thoracic wall and anterior abdominal wall. The second part of the subclavian artery is usually posterior to the scalene anterior artery and mainly it gives the costal cervical artery and then the third part will be lateral to scalenus anterior and usually it gives the dorsoscapular artery and on the outer border of the first rib as you can see this is the first rib on the outer border of the first rib subclavian artery continues as axillary artery this is a clavicle so the subclavian artery is actually in the supraclavicular triangle. So that's how you write your essay on the subclavian artery. So you can reverse or rewind the video and listen to it again and be able to write an essay on subclavian artery because it's examinable. It's a structure in the neck. So that's your transverse cervical from the thyrocervical trunk. That's your suprascapular artery going to pass over the um, ligament at the suprascapular notch. And that's your internal thoracic to give perforating branches on the medial aspect of the breast and that's your costal cervical trunk from the second part of subclavian artery behind the scalene anterior so what are the contents of the posterior triangle we have accessory nerve we have roots and trunks of the brachial plexus and some nerves that come from the roots and the trunk such as nerves to rhomboidias that's the dorsal scapular nerve nerve to serratus anterior that's the long thoracic nerve nerve to subclavius and suprascapular nerve which innervates supraspinators and infraspinators muscles then we have cervical nerves such as greater occipital nerve lesser occipital nerve supraclavicular nerves great auricular nerve and transverse cervical nerve of the neck we also have c3 um, c4 cervical nerves that supply the trapezius muscle so basically these are the nerves of the posterior triangle they have actually very many nerves so you need to appreciate like here you have your lesser occipital nerve you have the greater auricular going towards the auricles, the transverse cutaneous, supraclavicular. So all these are the nerves within the posterior triangle of the neck. Remember, you can appreciate the dorsal scapula. These are brachial plexus, the middle trunk, upper trunk, middle trunk, then the inferior trunk of the brachial plexus. Then we have various arteries in the posterior triangle. You have occipital artery from the external carotid artery, then the third part of subclavian artery is in the posterior triangle because this third part is lateral to scalenus anterior muscle. And the third part, we said it gives dorsal scapula. Then you have suprascapular artery that comes from the thyrocervical trunk, which is from first part of subclavian artery, 
as well as the transverse cervical from the thyro cervical trunk from the first part of the subclavian artery. So these are the arteries in the posterior triangle. Then the veins in the posterior triangle, you have the lower part of external jugular vein. So this is the external jugular vein, you can see it here. So it passes through the posterior triangle and it has its tributaries such as superficial cervical vein, that's your external jugular vein. Then um, subclavian vein is lower down, therefore it's not a content in the posterior triangle because it's um, sort of uh, posterior to the clavicle. So it's not a content of the posterior triangle because it's lower um, down. So this is your external jugular vein. Then you have lymph nodes of the posterior triangle. So you, you can have um, supraclavicular lymph nodes on the posterior triangle, so within the supraclavicular um, um, triangle. Then you can have occipital lymph nodes around the occiput there. And you can appreciate, so in the posterior triangle, you have supraclavicular and occipital um, lymph nodes. So clinically, the lymph nodes of the neck are divided based on the levels, okay? So level one, are are the submental group in the submental triangle and submandibular group in the submandibular triangle. Those are in the anterior neck. Level two, on the upper third of the internal jugular vein. Level three, on the middle third of internal jugular vein. Level four, on the lower third. So two, three, and four are on the internal jugular vein, on the upper, middle, and lower third correspondingly. Level five are in the posterior triangle, so around the transverse cervical and supra. Uh, uh, vessels and supraclavicular nodes. Level six, you go down uh, inwards at the pretracheal and paratracheal and around the cricoid cartilage. Then level seven, you descend from the neck downwards to the thorax. That's those are the mediastinal lymph nodes. So that's how they are divided into the level. So in terms of, um, for example, spread of cancer, level one means the spread is not so much. But by the time it has spread through level one, two, three, four, and up to seven, it means the metastasis is um, extensive. So level one, submental, submandibular, level two, three, four, around the internal jugular, level five, you're in the posterior um, triangle, level six, you're in the anterior um, compartment. So this just shows you level one, submental and submandibular, okay, level two, three, four, along the internal jugular vein level five in the posterior triangle, six you come anteriorly around the pre-tracheal and pre cricoid before seven you get to the mediastinum. So submental will drain the flow of the mouth, anterior oral tongue, anterior mandible, submandibular you drain the oral cavity, anterior nasal cavity, the mid face, submandibular glands, the scalp, then upper jugular. So you need to read through and know which regions are drained by these lymph nodes so that you're able to know that if you have a, uh, um, swell, swollen lymph nodes at this level, I'm likely to check for if there's a problem in the oral cavity, nasopharynx, hypopharynx, oropharynx. If I have, uh, can palpate and filter mandibular lymph nodes are um, enlarged, I need to examine the oral cavity, nasal cavity, and so on and so forth. So that's why this information on the um, drainage pattern of the lymph nodes is, uh, lymphatic drainage is important. So you need to pause and check these areas drained by each group of lymph nodes. So that just gives you an overview. So this is sort of trying to explain the clinical application of these lymph nodes in the neck because they are very, very important. Like if you find, um, we call them, um, lymph nodes, supraclavicular lymph nodes, like the virtuous nodes on the left supraclavicular area, if they're enlarged, it tells you there's a problem in the mediastinum or like breast in the thorax, in the mediastinum. So that's why you need to understand the regions drained by, by all these um, um, lymph nodes, groups of lymph nodes, okay? So next, we shall briefly discuss the root of the neck in the um, subsequent um, video.